So this weekend's card, I'll be honest, is kind of falling apart. We've had a couple of fight cancellations over the last couple of weeks and two fights fell out over the last couple of days. But for the Chris Gutierrez versus Javid Basharat original matchup, the UFC very quickly found a replacement opponent in Kwang Lei, who was training to be on the Contender Series in about five weeks' time. He was meant to fight against Aaron Toe from New Zealand, and I think they'll probably find a new opponent for Toe. I think that Kwang Lei has been disrespected in the lines right now. The lines opened as Chris Gutierrez has been a minus 350 favorite. He's now a minus 340 favorite. I think that's a little bit wide, even though I am just going to give you guys my pick. I am going to pick Chris Gutierrez to win this fight by decision. And I will, of course, talk about my reasoning in this video. But I do think that there's going to be a very scary five minutes and maybe a very scary 10 minutes for him in this fight because Kwang Lee is a guy that does possess a lot of KO power. He does stand at five foot six, which is going to be shorter than Chris Gutierrez, and he will probably be smaller than Chris Gutierrez as well, just because of how big Gutierrez actually is at this weight class. If you watch his fight against Alating Haley, who is a five foot five small bantamweight, Chris Gutierrez is significantly bigger than him in that matchup. I don't think it's necessarily going to look that same way because although Kwang Lei is 5'6 and is, I guess, on, on maybe the shorter end of bantamweight, I think a lot of bantamweights are typically about 5'8 to 5'9-ish. He is massive and he's got really big biceps and that's how he manages to kind of win all of his fights is by using that size advantage, by using that power advantage and just overall very crisp boxing to find knockouts in his fights. That's how he won his last couple of fights. He knocked out Cody Peterson with the head kick and then a couple of ground and pound strikes but it was set up with the boxing. That fight actually only lasted one minute and both guys did land pretty good shots in that fight and then against TL Tang. You could argue it was an early stoppage, but Kwang Lei did snap his head back pretty badly and dropped him pretty badly. Like, it was an early stoppage, but I don't really think that the result would have changed too much. Kwang Lei, as I did say, is a very explosive, very a powerful boxer. He has got a size advantage against all of his opponents, aside from Cody Peterson, who was very big for bantamweight, but... I think in this one here, he might struggle with the fact that Gutierrez is a bigger opponent than him because Kwang Lei isn't going to be able to dominate um, and just kind of use that bullying size advantage like he has in the past. The closest and toughest fights of Lei's career was against Sal Guerrero, and that was a very close fight because although Lei was doing more damage in the fight and definitely was the better striker in the fight, Sal Guerrero must have attempted something like 20 takedowns in that fight. He was constantly wrestling Lei, and Lei did show decent initial takedown defense, but towards the end of the fight, he was getting taken down a lot more than I think a lot of people would like to see. Now, in this fight, I don't necessarily think that Chris Gutierrez is going to wrestle because I am going to go and look at his stats here. And this is a very good website. I do recommend this one. It is called cageintel.com. Not a sponsor or anything, just a genuinely pretty nice website. And if you can actually look at quite a few of his more recent fights, Chris, uh, Chris Gutierrez is not attempting takedowns. As I said, he did take a uh, couple of takedowns against Song Yudong. He did get taken down a couple of times by Song Yudong and Alating Haley, but he's not actually attempting any takedowns. And he hasn't really attempted actually any takedowns throughout his entire career because in his UFC career, he has got a 30% takedown accuracy, but I believe he's actually only landed 0.28 takedowns per 15 minutes and that is probably just from one of his older fights in the UFC. Recently he has just been striking and I do think he can find success against Kwang Lei in this one here because if you do pay attention to and watch Chris Gutierrez's fights relatively closely he just has a very annoying peppering striking style. He likes to pressure you forward which I think that Kwang Lei is going to struggle with. Control the octagon and then just kind of throw his strikes, like he throws a lot of feints, he probably throws a lot more feints than he actually does strikes, but I think it is going to disrupt Kwang Lei, I think it's going to annoy Kwang Lei as well, and I do think that he is going to be able to just sort of control the striking for 15 minutes, and I do think Kwang Lei being a pretty big guy, taking the fight on short notice, that cardio might be sapped coming into that third round. Now, the way that I see this fight potentially going in Lei's favor, because I did say that this was going to be a very dangerous five minutes for Gutierrez, is because the way that Lei does fight is he actually wants to be the one on the front foot. So if Chris Gutierrez actually gives up that position and then forces himself to have to fight on the back foot, Lei is going to kind of come forward and land his big shots and land his big power with his boxing. 
And I think that maybe there is a genuinely real chance that he can knock out Chris Gutierrez because if you do watch Gutierrez versus Alating Haley, although Gutierrez clearly does win the fight, Alating Haley still finds his success. And we don't really necessarily see Gutierrez move his head all too much. You kind of do see it against Song Yedong, but in my opinion, I do believe that Song Yedong is just a much better boxer than Kwang Lei. I mean, I guess you could say it's obvious, but Song Yedong is a very, very good technical boxer, and I do think he's better than Kwang Lei. Maybe, well, yes, he, he probably does still have the same amount of power as well. I think it is just a step down in competition for Gutierrez, and I just do think that it's maybe a little bit too much too soon for Kwang Lei. I do think that Lei definitely has a spot in the UFC. I think there's a lot of fighters on the roster that Lei could beat, but I think it's going to be too much too soon, and I do think that Chris Gutierrez is just going to land more volume over 15 minutes. He's not going to have to deal with a takedown threat, although Kwang Lei has wrestled in the past. I don't think he's going to do it in this one against Chris Gutierrez. So I think that without the takedown threat that someone like Alating Haley and Song Yadong may have presented, I think Chris Gutierrez is going to be able to find his success by throwing that volume and just throwing a lot of feints. I don't think he's going to finish Kwang Lei. I mean, Kwang Lei never has been close to finished in his career. So it's not like I can look at a fight and say, oh, he, you know, survived a moment here, he survived a moment there. I mean, he got finished in, in his amateur career, but yeah. Um... I don't think he's going to get knocked out by Chris Gutierrez, even though he is a dynamic striker who knocked out Frankie Edgar in the spinning back fist against Danar Bakare. I think that we're going to see Gutierrez win with his volume striking over 15 minutes. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if there is a replacement fight for the Alan Nascimento pull out against Jeff Alpilho, I will make a prediction video for that. And then I also want to say Contender Series is coming next week. There is a short notice fight that I'm aware of, but hasn't been officially announced. So when that does get officially announced, I'll then do my full card prediction video after looking into the fight a little bit more. But with that, with that all being said, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.